After a night of suspense beneath the surface for the Mary Rose and for the salvage team above, Dawn to Wales aboard, dressed for the weather, to watch the final act for himself. Until now, he's only made her acquaintance as a diver. Good morning, sir. How are things going? Are you very wet this morning? We are wet, yes. How are things going? Find out. Board I'll find out. Oh. And I'll, um, I'll let you know later. Thank you very much. Things are looking good. 20th century technology went ponderously to work. Then, a crow's nest view of the cradle, but not yet its 16th century burden. There was as much tension among the recovery team as on the long steel cables from which the cradle hung. Then, after 437 years, the skeletal ribs of Henry VIII's tragic warship emerged to a triumphant salute of sirens and gunfire. Emaciated as she is, the Mary Rose is still an awesome sight to behold. And for none more so than project director Margaret Rule, for whom this was an act of faith. Nearly 700 soldiers and seamen died when the Mary Rose foundered as she sailed from Portsmouth to encounter the French fleet watched aghast by Henry VIII. His royal descendant, four centuries later, had witnessed the warship's recovery with no less fascination. Then, as divers worked to buoy her up, the Mary Rose went through another heart-stopping drama. A pin in one of the legs of the support frames had sheared. A cable snapped and there was a tremor of fear about the extent of damage. The salvage team desperately continued to pump water out of the hull. This was vital to eliminate the pressure of water as the lift continued. Time seemed to pass agonizingly slowly, but soon the winch was turning again. Soon the vital cargo was being lifted over the Solent to the barge waiting to take it safely into Portsmouth. When the salvaged warship has been properly cleaned and restored, she'll go on show beside another famous vessel, HMS Victory.